Hello YouTube, it's the Omega831 and today I'm doing a three-part series on how to make a Minecraft 1.2.4 bucket server. Now this series, the first part, will show you how to make the actual server. Well actually you're going to be downloading a pre-made server, but that's besides the point. And also how to port forward. The second part of the series will be how to use your Minecraft server, general commands, and so on and so on, and how to maintain your server. And the third part is how to install plugins that you want and configure them. But before we get started, please thumbs up the video. This did take a lot of time to do, and just remember to watch all three parts of the series to fully understand how to use and maintain your server. So anyways, let's get started. In the description, you will see the links for the bucket server. Download the one for your operating system, 32-bit or 64-bit. Okay, and it's a whole package this time. Uh, what you do is make sure you download the Java 32-bit Java 64-bit, install those first, install Notepad++, and here's a simple port forward program you can use. You can install that, and it'll port forward for you, so that's kind of nice. I included that in there, and WinRAR as well. So all of the programs that you'll need are inside the plugin, are inside the server package, and then once you have that, you just basically can drag and drop your... Or you could just leave it in there, but you can drag and drop your bucket server tutorial or bucket server 64 bit or 32 bit, whichever you have, onto your desktop there. And now we have the server itself here, all the files. I did create a wonderful spawn for you guys if you want to use it. You don't have to, you can delete your world, but if you want to use a custom world from say single player or whatever just make sure you call it world just like that rename it to world so uh, the server will know to use that that world file all right so just make sure you do that <clears throat> anyways uh, let's see here uh, I'll let you guys look at the plugins that I've chosen to use today we have the anti-logger that prevents people from logging out while in PvP essentials all the essential stuff, factions, false book, false book allows you to create gates, bridges, and so forth. Group manager is the permission plugin we are using. I don't know what that is. No cheat prevents cheating. Open inventory. Check the inventory of other players just to make sure they're not cheating. Uh, showcase is the shop plugin we're using at the moment. Uh, simple sign edit. You can add colors and stuff to your signs and also edit them on the fly. Uh, spawn guard, protect the spawn, top PvP, kill count, and leaderboards, uh, and ultimate arena, make some amazing arenas, voxel sniper, and world edit, world guard. Okay, so those are the plugins that we are using. Um, now the, uh, let's see here, the run back file, if you edit it with notepad++, You'll see this code here. This is the universal code. It will work with pretty much any system. Just make sure you install both the 32-bit and 64-bit versions of Java that I've included inside the package. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and run your server. Actually, I wouldn't run it yet. Uh, never mind, don't run it yet. What we will do is <clears throat> port forward. So we go to start type in cmd, type in IP config, look for your router or your uh, network connection for the computer that you're using to host a server. This is mine. The uh, Write down your IPv4 address and your default gateway. All right. And once you have that information written down, you can exit that and go into your web browser of choice and type in your default gateway into the web browser and you're gonna need a login uh, the login information it's really uh, differs from router to router sometimes you can leave it blank and just log in other times you can use the username as admin and password as password 
but if your system administrator or your pairs have changed this information you'll have to get it from them and let's see here oh right before we go any further than that you can also go to google type in port forward and go to the first link here this is the main port forward web page there is an application that you can download it does cost money to use but I've also included a free program that you might want to try inside the server package but if you can't get that one to work and if you can't get this to work then you can try this app uh, application from port forwards website so anyways the manual way of doing it you click on router list you find your router Okay, why is this taking so... Okay, there we go. So mine is a D-Link. You just find your router. You got to check for the mo model number. And the way you find your model number is you go to your router and look on the router itself. It'll say model number. And you just write that information down. And you come back here, find your model number or anything as close to the model number that you're looking for. Uh, and then once you find it, you... Uh, then you go to um, the Minecraft server application that you want to pour forward, and it will tell you a step-by-step -step guide here, even also your login information by default, and also how to pour forward step-by-step. -step. You just read those instructions, and it tells you step-by-step -step for your specific router. So that's how you do that but I'll show you on mine just in case okay so mine was under advanced and we go to port forwarding here it could also be called port triggering virtual servers uh, I think that's all I can remember it being called but make sure the box is checked you give it a title of some sort so you know what it is you got to do TCP and UDP. Some routers allow you to do both at the same time, but others you have to do separately, like mine. So you just do 25565, and then you type in your IPv4 address here. You put that in there, and then 25565 again, and then you, uh, as long as you have TCP and UDP open uh, for the port, you click Save Changes. Your router will have to restart. And once it does, people will be able to join your server. But now, if you get like an error message saying, uh, if you get an error message saying unable to access craft bucket or cannot find the path specified, make sure your craft bucket jar file, the server file itself, looks like that craft bucket. That's all it needs to say. Nothing at the end, just make sure it says craft bucket like that. And uh, you shouldn't be getting that me message anymore. And also, if you get the, uh, what you call it, um, fail to bind to port or something like that, don't. that means you put the server IP here. Leave the server IP blank. Do not put anything there unless you're using Hamachi. If you're using Hamachi, put the IP right here. But if you're not using Hamachi, leave it blank. And also, if you can't use port 25565, you'll have to change it to a different port number. Any other numbers besides 25565. And then you'll have to port for that number accordingly. So, just keep that in mind. <clears throat> So now that you have your server port forwarded, you can go ahead and run the file or the server. You can run the server and we will log into it. All right, so to connect to your own server, you got to type in localhost. And to promote yourself to owner, you're going to need to type slash man, you add your username, and then general 
and then five stars at the end. And it says it would move to the group general five stars. That's just the group called the owner group, basically. That's what I call it on my server. You can change that in group manager if you want to. Um, so that's pretty much how you promote yourself. You got to do that while you're in game, I think. And the IP you need to give to your friends for them to join you is your external IP. So you just go to IP chicken and I am hosting this server so it's for 30 players this is the IP for my server so if you want to come in you're more than welcome to and that's the IP but when you type that in you'll have a different IP here you just give that IP to whoever you want to join and that's how you do it that's pretty much it and thanks for watching bye bye oh wait make sure you watch part two see it